the AFC South. Maybe the craziest division in all of the NFL in 2023. For both the good and the bad. Let's see how it looks in 2024. Six Report here, back with another video. Today we are talking about the AFC South, a division where in 2023 a winner was almost guaranteed, and yet they didn't win the division. Let's talk about what they did during the offseason. Okay, question for the Texans. What do you do after you won the division in 2023, after winning three games the year before, picking second overall, your rookie quarterback had one of the greatest seasons by a rookie ever, and you got to the division around the playoffs? Answer, you add Daniel Hunter and Stephon Diggs. Starting with Stephon Diggs, I love this trade. It cost him a second round pick and essentially it's a one year deal for Stephon Diggs. However, you get two later round picks back and Stephon Diggs joins a receiving core that already has Tank Dell and Nico Collins. Whether or not Stephon Diggs is slowing down or not, it doesn't matter. He doesn't have to be the number one receiver for this Texans team. Also with Daniel Hunter, they lost Jonathan Griard. He signed with the Vikings, so they took Hunter from the Vikings, but the Vikings got Greer. Never mind. But Hunter forms a deadly duo with Will Henderson Jr. I can't wait to see what they do in 2024. Now, they also got Aziz Alshair. I hope I said that right. Danico Altry and Tim Settle on the front seven. Tommy Townsend is their new punter. And you also get C.J. Henderson and Jeff Okuna at corner. There are former top 10 picks that didn't really pan out, but hey, we've seen stranger things happen. We've seen crazy reclamation projects, so maybe they can work out for them. I would also say they might get a corner in the draft just because you have Derek Stanley. He had a very good season last year, but he still hasn't played a full season in his first two years. Don't know if you really want to take that kind of a risk. Definitely could see them get a corner in the draft. Also, I could see them getting a running back because Devin Singletary is no longer with the team. They also lost two offensive linemen, and you have Kenyon Green and Titus Howard that have had problems staying on the field. So definitely offensive line I could see in the draft as well. Also maybe linebacker. They lost Denzel Perryman and Blake Cashman. But right now, this team, this Texans team, is playing with house money. That's the biggest thing right now because they were not expected to be as good as they were last year. And, yeah, they're expected to win the AFC South, but they are way ahead of schedule on their rebuild. I think they are a dark horse to be the number one seed in the AFC. And, you know what, if they head to the Super Bowl in the next three years, it would not shock me one bit. This is a team on the rise. I can't wait to see what they do in 2024 and beyond. To say that Indianapolis didn't do a lot in free agency is an understatement. They only signed one guy, and that was Joe Flacco. He's going to be the backup to Anthony Richardson at quarterback. However, in terms of re-signings, Michael Pittman Jr. is back. They got him done long-term, their number one receiver. That was exactly what they needed. Robert Stewart is back. Kenny Moore, Tyquan Lewis, and Tavon Bryant. So they did a good job re-signing guys that are going to make an impact on their team. However, they lost Gardner Minshew. That's why they got Joe Flacco. Zach Moss is gone. He was the back of the Jonathan Taylor. It was time for him to move on. He deserved a starting role. Isaiah McKenzie and Jake Martin are also gone. But really with this Colts team, I mean, they had a very good season last year. Again, they were another team in the AFC South that wasn't expected to do much. They picked fourth overall in the draft, and they almost won the division. It came down to the final week, and unfortunately, the Texans were the ones that came out on top. But that does not take away from the season the Colts had. They have a bright future. The biggest thing for them is making sure Anthony Richardson stays healthy. He went down early in the season, had a shoulder issue that cost him the rest of the year. Now he's back, ready to go. I'm excited to see what Anthony Richardson does this season. In his short time as a rookie, he showed he definitely has something and could be a franchise quarterback. But it's all about being consistent and making sure you're not making too many mistakes. And if Anthony Richardson can do that... He is going to be a fun player to watch. Also, keep Jonathan Taylor healthy. Jonathan Taylor is one of the best running backs in the NFL when he is on the field. Make sure he is on the field. 
And really for the Colts, this is another team that I would say just take the best player available. Just get the best player available, see who you can add to this team. They are going to be playoff contenders, and maybe they could steal the division from the Texans. Hey, we could see it. So with the Colts and the Texans, this is going to be a fun season for those two. Jacksonville, 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 Jacksonville! How did you miss the playoffs? At one point, you had the number one seed. You had a 99% chance to win your division, and yet you blew it. That was one of the biggest collapses in NFL history a year after you had one of the biggest turnarounds in a season. How? Just how? All right, before I lose my voice on this, let's talk about what they did. They re-signed Ernest Johnson as their backup to Travis Etienne. All right, in terms of signings, they got Gabe Davis to replace Calvin Ridley. They got Darnell Savage to replace Rayshon Jenkins. Mitch Morris is their new center. Ronald Darby to replace Darius Williams. They got Eric Armstead after he was cut from the 49ers, and Devin DuVernay is their new return specialist. <laughs> That's going to be fun with the new kickoff rules, that is. However, I just don't know if this team is really any better than they were last year because all they did was replace guys that they lost in free agency. By the way, DuVernay is replacing Jamal Agnew. I, I just don't know what to make of this Jacksonville team right now. I mean, I could see them go wide receiver in the draft because do I really think Gabe Davis is going to be a top option in this Jacksonville receiving unit? I don't know. He really didn't turn out well with the Buffalo Bills. He had great games at points, but he didn't. He wasn't consistent. That's what held him back. I could see them go corner. I could see them go anywhere in the draft that's not edge because you have Trayvon Walker and Josh Allen or quarterback because of Trevor Lawrence. And speaking of Trevor Lawrence, he's got a contract coming up, but is he consistent enough to where you're comfortable giving him $40 million a year? I have no idea. This is a big year for Jacksonville and I have no idea how this is going to go. I don't know what they're going to do in the draft and I don't know how it's going to be on the field. This could be a frustrating season if you're a Jacksonville fan, if I'm being quite honest, after last offseason where you thought you had the division in your hands. And what point you did, and here we are. You know, I'm kind of shocked with what the Titans did during the offseason. They re-signed Nick Folk and Nick Westbrook, but that's not the big moves right here. They signed Calvin Ridley, Lord Cushenberry, Chidobia Rousier, Tony Pollard, Kenneth Murray, Sebastian Joseph Day, Mason Rudolph. Now, they did lose Ryan Tannehill and Derrick Henry, but that was to be expected. They cut Andre Dillard, Azim Al Shair, I talked about him with the Texans. Same thing with Danico Autry. Aaron Brewer's gone. Sean Murphy Bunting and Christian Fulton are also gone. However, they are fully embracing that they need to do a rebuild, especially with Mike Rabel no longer the head coach. And that came as a shock to a lot of people, myself included. But I think the Titans are doing this the right way. And keeping Will Levis as the starter, you know what? I'm all for it. Because he didn't really get a full chance to show what he can do in the NFL. I mean, the offensive line was not great. Outside of DeAndre Hopkins, the receiving core wasn't great. And it was just a mess all around for the Titans last year. So keeping him as the quarterback for 2024, I like it. If it works out, it works out. If it doesn't, you might be in a position to get a quarterback in 2025. That's just my thought on that. Now, what do the Titans do in the draft? Definitely offensive line. Definitely go with an offensive line. You got Peter Skaronsky last year. If Joe Walt's there, you take him. Just take him. Definitely could see a wide receiver. This is a deep receiver class. And I'm sorry, DeAndre Hopkins is not going to be able to play forever. And I just don't see anybody else that can really have a breakout season and perform like DeAndre Hopkins can. I just don't see it on this Titans roster. Definitely could see corner at some point in the draft. Really, the Titans just need talent on this team, and hopefully in a few years they're back in the playoffs, or maybe they're like the Texans and they can get back to the playoffs in 2024. We've seen crazier things happen, people. Again, look at the Texans last year. All right, guys, those were my thoughts on the teams in the AFC South. Next up is the NFC South, and as always, I'll see you guys next time.